First week of term, February 1994. The first piece of advice the coach ever gave Danny was not about swimming, not about his strokes, not about his breathing, not about how he could improve his dive or his turns. All of that would come later. He would never forget that first piece of advice. The squad had just finished training and Danny was standing shivering off to one side. The other guys all knew each other. They had been destined to be friends from the time they were embryos in their mother's wombs, when their fathers had entered their names on the list to attend Kunz College. Danny kept repeating the words over and over in his head. Kunz College, Kunz College, Kunz College. The nickname he and Demet had invented when he, to when he first told her he had to change schools. Have to or want to? He'd had to turn away as he answered. It'll make me a better swimmer. They'll all be rich, she countered. You know that, don't you? Only the filthy rich go to Kunz College. But she left it at that. She wasn't going to argue with him, not about the swimming. She knew what the swimming meant to him. Hey guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do my review of Barracuda by Christos. Chulkas. Chulkas. Okay, Christos Chulkas is an Australian Greek origin writer and he is most known for having written a novel called The Slap which I read quite a few years ago with my book club which was polarizing to say the least. This book is the story of Daniel Kelly, alias Danny, alias Dan. In the beginning of the book, he is a teenager and he has gotten a full paid scholarship to go to a fancy school so that he can get a good education, but then also so that he can swim and eventually one day go to the Olympics or something like that. Daniel Kelly is also from a working class family, but his mother is Greek origin and his father is white. So he is a brown boy going to this upscale school. So the thing is, okay, so the book is a study of how a young boy becomes a man and with all the difficulties that Daniel or Danny has from his background, because this is a story that discusses the idea of the difference of class and sexuality. Uh, Danny is from a working class background and he's gonna be going to school with a bunch of rich kids. He is also a homosexual and he is slowly but surely struggling with it. He hasn't actually vocally come out about it, but he holds it as a shameful secret to a certain extent. And the book deals a lot with that. Now, the story is not told in a linear fashion. And this might be one of the few reasons why I won't recommend it to everyone, but I will recommend it to people who can get along with that because it's a multi-linear story in the sense where you constantly jump back and forth within the story. So we start at one point, which is a moment in the past, and all the way to the end, we do this. We we do the boing boing. But what's interesting is at some points we we go from the point of when he be, goes to the, to the school, we will go ahead and then we'll jump back just a bit and then we'll go forward and then we'll go back just a bit and then we'll go even more forward and then we'll come back to two times to the uh, to the past so it may seem confusing as I'm explaining it but as you're reading it you'll find that you can get used to that 
and start to understand more about that and the reason why he tells the story this way. There's another thing he does is he uses two points of view, jumping between third person and first person. This is another reason why I'm not going to recommend it to everyone because jumping between first and third person can be challenging to read. I understand why he does it. He has the first person point of view is really like you're, like you're in Danny's head. Whereas the third person point of view is more omniscient and more real and more raw to a certain extent. Sometimes he's telling you the truth. And it, it is also the point of view that brings, that evokes his emotions of shame and sadness and shock. Okay, so it's very cleverly written. The man knows what he's doing. Okay, now the story also has some some other aspects to it that are very interesting. This is a story based on the idea of swimming, the sport of swimming. So we're going to look at what is that to be a top-notch swimmer? What What kind of training do you have to do? What kind of mindset do you have to have? This is a story of someone who has all of it going body-wise and, you know, and, and strength-wise, but he hasn't got it up here. And he hasn't got it up here for many different reasons that you will figure out once you read the book. So I'm not going to get too much into that. But what I will get into is the fact that the major themes of the book are developed very well throughout, through the different aspects of Danny's swimming. So the back of the book hints to the fact that he starts at one point and then there's a down spiral descent. And that's all you need to know. The rest you just need to read and accept. Writing is fantastic. It is quite the chunker, 513 pages. I had the pleasure of Buddy reading this alongside Jacqueline from uh, Six Minutes for Me. And I decided to read this for Aussie April and she said, yeah, I've got it. I haven't read it yet. Let's read it together. So I enjoyed reading it with her because she's Australian and it's true in the beginning. I said, oof, I think I'm struggling a little bit because there seem to be a lot of Australian references that I don't necessarily get. But after a certain point, I would say around page 40, 45, this is when the book started opening up for me and I started really connecting with it to a certain extent. There are some other themes besides the homosexuality, besides the idea of dealing with self, self-worth and, and failure. There's also this idea of shame, uh, shame uh, for many different reasons. Uh, the shame that the author writes about in the book, he almost makes the, the reader feel this, the shame that the different characters that he, that he shows this emotion through, you start to feel it as well. It's, it's very well done. It almost is slightly voyeuristic in some, in some cases. There is a lot of, you know, cursing, as you heard, Kunz College in the, in the bit that I read. That's just how he writes. He cursed, they have a lot of curse words in here. There's a lot of homosexual sex. So if that, you know, you don't want to read that, then you might want to give this one a miss. But I would say if you like literary fiction, you want something that's a little bit different, that, you know, challenges you a little bit in your reading. I highly recommend this one. It was a really, really interesting read. I'm just amazed at his writing. Now, I remember the slap and I remember its challenges, but I don't remember it in detail. And I feel like I need to go back and reread the slap to see so if some of the some of the things the techniques of writing are the same or if this is something particular to the novel but yeah if you like swimming this made me miss the swimming pool because i like to swim um as my sport of choice 
and now that we're in the pandemic I cannot go to the swimming pool and I am missing the swimming pool a lot so when I was reading this I was you know re reminiscing about the swimming pool but at the same time I was marveling over the way that he would use the technique of swimming through breathing as parts uh, of the story so he does that he imitates strokes and swimming through repetition and through the motion of water of a person moving through water the first part of the book is called breathe in and the second part is breathe out so normally when you breathe out you 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 relax and you come to some kind of uh, relief and yeah he doesn't give you relief in the breathe in, breathe out section let's just put it that way but the breathe in section is very intense and there's a mystery that he develops in the first part and it kind of goes like a crescendo all the way to the end of the first part so I would say it's the last 25% of the first part is a real crescendo I mean like it it ends and it is just like oh you are taken literally aback like you 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 just like oh you're like completely breathless so yeah I highly recommend it I thoroughly enjoyed it yes yeah, so that's all I have to say about reading Barracuda just fantastic oh and it's called Barracuda why because this was another alias that was given to Daniel Kelly because he was such a fast swimmer they started calling him Barracuda so that's all I have for you today Bye.